All right, well, this is uh, the first video that I've ever done like this, where I'm just basically talking about the albums that I have, uh, both on vinyl and CD, of course, because uh, I, I do collect both, though I have way more CDs than I do vinyl. Um, I actually have getting close to 300 CDs now, so I know that compared to a lot of people who do this kind of thing on YouTube, that's not much, but I, I don't really have the kind of money that I can spend on that, uh, you know, to my to my own volition, I guess you could say. So it's it's really more of a, a hobby. Every now and then, uh, I usually go and buy at least at least one or two records a month, um, and it's something that I really do enjoy doing. I just really appreciate the sound of records as well. Um, but most of them are back home in Newfoundland. I'm living in Montreal right now, um, and, and I don't actually have a record player with me at the moment, so it does feel kind of uh, redundant, I guess you could say, considering my record player is back home. But you know, I still I still do like buying albums. So uh, first up is Esong with Arctis. It's a pretty gnarly slab of progressive black metal, I guess you could say. Uh, it's on black vinyl, I believe. Just take it out of here. Yeah. So it's uh, it's actually got four four individual discs. I guess you call them discs. I don't know. I don't know if you would call this thing here like specifically a vinyl, especially when there's two of them in the package. But uh, yeah, this album is is fantastic. Um, lots of great tracks on here. My personal favorite is actually uh, "Until I Too Dissolve." Fantastic. Uh, also, "Mass Darkness," which is the single that came out for this record. Uh, absolutely fantastic. I haven't listened to Isan's stuff since this. I think he's released a new album recently, actually. Uh, I haven't had a chance to listen to it yet. But, fantastic, fantastic artist. Uh, next is an album from my teenage years, something that I was shocked when I found at the record store. I never thought I would see this in person. One of my favorite stoner records of all time, Jex Thoth, self-titled. Love the album art on this. Uh, this it's actually what really um, drew me to it in the first place was the the album art because I mean it's it's so unique you know I've never seen an album art like this before it's just the the red and the white juxtaposed against each other it's almost got like a Christmassy vibe but yet still the and the logo too like the Jack Stock logo is fantastically designed. Um, came out on a record label called I Hate, which is a fantastic label name. And here's the inside of the sleeve. Fantastic. And again, here's uh, the front and the back together because it's actually one big image. Yeah. My favorite song on this is definitely uh, Separated at Birth. Which, uh, amazing, amazing song. It was the first song I ever heard from this band. And yeah, like I said, I've, I've been following them since uh, my high school days. My favorite Stoner Doom uh, sludge, well, not really sludge, a cult rock album that I've ever heard. It's, it's my favorite of all time, in that genre at least. Oh, excuse me. Uh, next is something a little bit different, um, but also a classic album regardless. Enter the Wu-Tang. Now, I, I'll, I'll be completely honest, I've never been a huge fan of hip-hop. Uh, even when I was growing up, uh, I had a lot of friends who liked hip-hop, but I was definitely one of those, it's metal or nothing, it's the only thing that exists, so I was definitely one of those kind of people. Um, but recently, specifically, like last year, I started to get the attitude, I, I had a, an attitude shift of saying like, you know, why am I restraining myself to one genre of music when there is so much greatness out there that I'm not privy to, really. And I really wanted to make a, 
a, a focused effort to change my outlook on music. And I, I mean, I wasn't really an elitist at the time that I, I decided that, but I still didn't really understand or appreciate the sounds of hip hop as a genre. And I think that this album, for a person who's never really given that genre the time of day, this is the perfect starting off point. Uh, it wasn't technically my starting off point. I was also listening to Straight Outta Compton um, last year when I started listening to this too, but. This is just such a fantastic album. Every song on here is a banger. Every every last one of them. Um, my personal favorites are, well, I, I don't want to say the title of it, but Track 2 and uh, also The Mystery of Chess Boxing, which is fantastic. I love that song so much that I actually know all the words to it now. So, and also, out of all the, uh, the MCs on this record, because I know there's like eight or nine of them in the group. Uh, gotta be Old Dirty Bastard, without a doubt, my favorite. He's got such a unique style that you know none of the other guys really uh, can compare to. Uh, and you know, people say like, oh, like Method Man is technically the best or whatever. But I, I just love how fucking crazy Old Dirty Bastard is. Uh, this weird like off-key singing that he does that you wouldn't expect to hear on a record like that is just. It's fucking nuts. Um, up next is we uh, we have the cult is alive by Dark Throne. Dark Throne is without a doubt my favorite black metal band. Um, no one else really compares to them, and for good reason because they have a sound that really struck a chord with me. It's like they started out as death metal and then they had this really traditional purist black metal style with the three um, Transylvanian Hunger. Under a Funeral Moon and A Blaze in the Northern Sky. Those three are classic black metal records, but then they started going off into this more almost like black and speed metal style, and then they went cross punk. And this is one of those albums that's kind of like a blend of those, like it's got the cross punk style. And it has one of my favorite Dark Throne songs of all time on it Too Old, Too Cold, which is a fun as fuck song to play on guitar. Here's the inside, it's just really dark, you can't really see anything. It's just uh, grim and everything that you'd expect from a black metal band. There's the track list on the back. Yeah, and obviously it's on black vinyl because of course it is, it's black metal. Up next is Between the Buried and Me, a classic band from my high school years with their self-titled album. You know, this album does not get a whole lot of love, even by fans of the band. Um, it's their debut. It's not as progressive or uh, intricate as their newer stuff, especially in comparison to Colors, which is really when they took off and started headfirst down that road of really well-produced, really incredibly complex and thought-provoking uh, progressive metal with a lot of experimentation, but this is definitely more of a, um, I guess, traditional metalcore, deathcore style record. Uh, but it does have some experimental leanings on it. You know, it's not it's not like it's cookie cutter stuff like a lot of things in that genre are. I still, even if you know, it's not as good as a lot of their newer stuff. I still think this album holds a lot of merit. And I still would recommend it as as a record to check out if you're a fan of the band and you haven't given this one a listen yet because of the opinions you might have heard um, regarding its sound in comparison to those later records. I still say give this one a shot because it's still got some great songs on it. Uh, More of Myself to Kill, Arsonist, uh, and of course the last one, Chevenel Cut a Flip, which I have no idea what the fuck that means, but it's a deadly song. And uh, there's actually a lyric sheet on the inside that came with this one. So that's pretty cool. That's the front there. And most of the lyrics are on the back. So that's pretty, pretty awesome. By the way, uh, obviously, you probably know Between the Barrier and Me did just come out with a new record. And it's Fucking savage. Uh, Automata Part One, I think is what it's called. 
So next is uh, something a little bit different again, although still within the realm of the metal sphere, I guess you could say. Perturbator with Dangerous Days. And this is another vinyl that has four, uh, sorry, four, yeah, well, four sides, but two discs to it. Um, and of course, it's on black vinyl. Um, this is a fantastic album. I believe it's Perturbator's debut, though I'm not entirely sure. Um, and, you know, it's, if you don't know who Perturbator is, he is a synthwave artist popularized by the, uh, I guess, cult status record label now, known as Blood Music. There's the back. Um, yeah, these, I would actually single-handedly credit Blood Music with the, the popularity that this genre has received because uh, if you look at their, their band camp page, it's not just Perturbator who they have, it's, uh, they also have Ghost, I believe, is on their label, and also Dan Terminus. And if I'm not mistaken, Carpenter Brute as well, who I'm going to see in a few weeks, so I'm really looking forward to that. But this is a great starting off point for somebody who wants to get into this genre. Uh, synthwave is, it, it's, if you don't know what it is, it's basically music that is obviously made with synths and really heavily inspired by the soundtracks of old action and horror films from the 80s. So as you can you can tell by the style of this artwork here that that's what they're going for, and it really really nails it. Um, I can't remember which song is it. Yeah, so she is young, she is beautiful, she is next is my favorite song by Perturbator. It's on this album, which is the reason why I bought it. Um, and yeah, it's it's fantastic. Uh, definitely highly recommend this one. Yeah, here's the inside. The sleeves are black, which I like on the inside. Uh, this is the second disc, I think. And again, like I mentioned, it's black vinyl. So, that's pretty cool. Really stoked for that Carpenter Brew show, though. Uh, I saw Perturbator live actually last year, uh, I think it was in October, and I've never danced that hard in my life. I'm not really much of a dancer. But, uh, oh my god, I can't get this back in. Oh shit. Okay, I'll, I'll leave that for later and deal with that as the, as the time comes. But yeah, it was an amazing show and um, really, really had a good time. They played with, uh, well, he technically, because there's only one guy, played with Le Matos, which is uh, a French synthwave duo, and another guy, another single producer, Simply an artist named uh, Mole Machine Music. I can't remember if that's like his full name or if it's just Mole Machine, but they were all awesome. Uh, next is Dark Throne again with Dark Thrones and Black Flags. Another classic slab of blackened heavy metal slash blackened crust punk, whatever you want to call it. Um, and again, just like I mentioned before, this is just another, it's another really great record from, from that era of Dark Thrones music. Um, and I really, I really want to give Dark Throne a lot of credit because they're actually one of my biggest inspirations as a musician myself just because they, they don't give a fuck. They do whatever they want. They have their style and they have this like, this almost like cultish reverence for old school heavy metal that they, they pepper the design of their albums with. So like here on the back you can see it says, uh, Gilva Fenris, Nagel, Vocals, Heavy Metal Thunder, Songwriting, uh, Photo of the Dictator by Elon Naper. I don't know if those, that's how you pronounce his name, but, uh, and <laughs> here in, uh, in quotations it says, Mao Tse Tsung Rock. Nice play on word, uh, play on words. Play on word. Now on the other side, it's Nocturnal Culto, who you can barely make out because the photo is so fucking dark, which I love. Uh, Nocturnal Culto, guitars, bass, rotten exhale, songwriting, Pletrefil, and proud member of Inlandet Manscore. Photo by Metspo. I have no idea what any of that means. Uh, and then on the bottom there, it says, Break the Chains. Fantastic. 
Here's uh, the close of the album art. Classic. I think my favorite song off this record has to be Norway in September. I just love the, the slow start. Da -na, da -na. It's heavy as fuck. I love that song. And I also love this. They also do this kind of thing with the inside, with the, the sleeve itself. There's a photo here. And I think that's just Fender's uh, by a campfire that he looks like he just extinguished and the sun is just coming up over the horizon or it's just going down, I can't really tell. Um, and obviously, again, black vinyl. And then all the lyrics on the back. So that's pretty cool. Next up is, there's a lot of these by the way, because this is the first time I've done it and I've obviously purchased a lot of records since I've moved to Montreal. Uh, a band that's caused a little bit of controversy lately, uh, Young and in the Way with their self-titled album. By the way, I love the artwork for this, just a heavily tatted hand holding a fucking combat knife. It's pretty sick. And the back, just uh, the track list, black, white font, very simple. Um, and if you're wondering why these guys have caused controversy lately, it's because um, one or a couple of members of the band have been accused of sexual harassment. I'm not entirely sure of the specifics of the, the claims, but apparently some of them were accused of, of sexual harassment and they just decided to call it quits and just said, well, fuck this, our career is done. End it all. Um, I mean... That, that to me seems pretty damning, but uh, who's really to say? Uh, I, I made a mistake, by the way. This isn't a self-titled album. It's actually called When Life Comes to Death, and the title is on the inside. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you can see it because it's basically black on black, and the text itself is just a little bit off color from the rest of the inside, but yeah. Um, and my favorite song on this album is... Where is it? Be My Blood. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. Um, or it could be Take My Hand. I'm not sure, but one of them... The song that I really like, it has this Gorgoroth vibe. Uh, it sounds very similar to Sign of an Open Eye, which is my favorite Gorgoroth song. It's just slow, heavy as fuck, just punches you in the face with every, every kick of the drum and... Uh, it, that's the song that turned me on to this band. Um, and also, interesting, it's a clear vinyl. So, that's different. All the rest of the ones I have are black. I also gotta say, I really like the, uh, the Young in the Way logo. I know that a lot of bands have that cliche of like taking all the letters in their name and forming some weird obscure symbol out of it. But, I actually really like what Young and In The Way have done. I don't know if you can see it there, but uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. I think the first time I ever saw that done was actually with J.R.R. Tolkien, um, who did that with his name when he put his signature on books and stuff. So, Regardless of the accusations, this is a dope album, and I would highly recommend this. It's uh, kind of like black and crust punk, but not like Dark Throne style black and crust punk. It's a lot more heavier and with more modern production, but it sounds really grimy still. So they, the production on this thing is fantastic. Uh, now, next, we're almost at the end for vinyl. Uh, classic, classic, classic EP. Haunting the Chapel. What else can I really say about this? Uh, you know, I mean, if you're if you're watching this and you haven't fucking heard this EP yet, where the fuck have you been for the last, uh, I don't know how many years? Um, cool thing about this, though, is it's not, it's also not a black vinyl, so I just ate my words. That's not the only vinyl that uh, I have that isn't black. It's clear with blood spatter. So, that is pretty fucking dope, in my opinion. And of course, all of these songs are classics. Chemical Warfare, Capture of Sin, Haunting the Chapel, 
aggressive perfecter. I think that Haunting the Chapel itself, the, uh, the, the title track of this EP, is my favorite. So. I love the fact that I own this. And finally, for records at least, I think this is actually the first one that I purchased <clears throat> when I moved to Montreal. Defending the Throne of Evil, Carpathian Forest. Uh, this is also a great black metal album. Um, definitely a classic by this band. I love the album artwork. It reminds me of Cradle of Filth's first album. It's got the same uh, color palette, so I like that. The juxtaposition of black, white, and um, I guess really white blue as well. And on the back, just the blurry ass photo of a forest. Typical black metal stuff, but you know, I. What else do you expect from, from one of the genre's greats? And, you know, this, this album has such great song titles, too. Uh, it's Darker Than You Think, The Well of All Human Tears, Put to Sleep Like a Sick Animal, uh, Christian, sorry, Christian Incoherent Dribble, Necrophiliac anthrop Anthropophagus Maniac, the Old House on the Hill, and Cold Murderous Music, which is a very good description of the music that Carpathian Forest makes. And then on the inside, you have this awesome photo of the band, which is so cool. And all the lyrics on the other side. And I do believe that, uh, yes, yeah, so it's a black sleeve as well. Oh, oh, wow, I'm just completely off, completely off on this. Hmm. This vinyl's blue. I completely forgot about that. Isn't that dope? I love that. That's so sick. I mean, you never would expect that from a black metal band. And lo and behold, Carpathian Forest, the only guys to ever include uh, pink and purple in their album art, come out with a blue vinyl. Well, it does it for records, at least, but it's not it. I do have a bunch of CDs as well, <clears throat> which I'm very happy to own because I love all of these. First up is uh, another controversial band, but you know I think that kind of comes with the territory at this point if you're black metal. Uh, Taka with Norag Swappen. I used to listen to this album all the time when I would walk home from work back when I lived in St. John's. Um, and I remember the first time I did that, it was getting close to winter, but it wasn't quite winter yet. It was like uh, sometime in like late October, so the weather was getting really shit. And the, it was just like the cold, cold, bitter night in St. John's, and fog was everywhere. And I had this album on, um, on my MP3 player at the time. And I've never been able to recreate that kind of atmosphere of walking down an empty, desolate road in the middle of the night in cold-ass Newfoundland, full of mist, listening to um, Nordbundet and Duvilla Villa uh and also Mir, which those three are definitely my favorite tracks on this record, especially Duvilla Villa Vestland. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly because it is Norwegian, but. I love how that song has this um, old western, almost like classic rock vibe, especially with the breakdown at the end. Uh, yeah, even despite Taka's uh, controversy, I would still recommend this. This is a great, honestly, in my opinion, one of the greatest black metal albums ever made. And that is just my opinion. Up next, a band that I saw recently, I uh, can't remember the name of the venue. I, I saw them at, but honestly the venue was shit and um, the sound wasn't really good, but th they tried their best. Uh, the Atlas Moth with Coma Noir. Oh, this, uh, it's kind of hard to see the album art because it is black, I mean Noir is in the title. But this is a great, great album. I guess the best 
word to describe them best the best genre to describe them with would be post metal I think that, I think that's what they call themselves um, but yeah this this album is great uh, my favorite song on it would be it's a toss-up between galactic brain and um, actual human blood and smiling knife those three are fantastic there's lots of great melodies on this lots of great riffs the drums fantastic uh, definitely highly recommended this um, and it's on prosthetic records as well which is one of my favorite labels um, hmm. right, two here from a band I mentioned earlier Cradle of Filth Cruelty and the Beast and Dusk and Her Embrace now I, I do love Cruelty and the Beast it's a fantastic record um, but in all honesty, I haven't listened to it as much as I have Dusk and Her Embrace because this is actually my favorite Cradle album. Um, although Hammer of the Witches is creeping up there because, I mean, I was blown away when I heard that. But this to me is, is Cradle Filth at their peak. Um, they have not been able to top, for me at least, uh, a gothic romance, Red Roses for the Devil's Sore, which is one of the best songs they've ever recorded and I don't think that they'll ever be able to top that one just the, the sheer complexity and the melodies in it fantastic 